It's the White Sox hosting the Kansas City Royals. Game one of a three game series and for the White Sox they're in desperate need of a win. But a lot of moves today as the White Sox traded away pitchers Michael Kopech and Eric Fetty and outfielder Tommy Pham. There the south side Monday unis Chris Flexen gets the ball for the White Sox tonight. So quickly two up and two down. Finney hits it up the right field line and that's a fair ball up into the chain link fence and the Royals have a runner in scoring position with two down mm, 24th double and he absolutely nailed it it was loud he swings hits a high fly ball into left center for Ben and and he'll make the catch so oh. the Royals 0 for 1 with runners in scoring position all three pop outs and this is a big start for Alec Marsh. He's trying to pull it back together after a great start to the season. That'll bring up the struggling Luis Robert Jr. He is all for his last 17. Uh, that one is hard hit and gets into center field. And Luis Robert Jr. with a hit in his first at bat. The way he's been running lately, I mean, very few people able to throw him out. There he goes. The throw by Perez. And safe. <laughs> Luis Robert Jr. He's just too good. He is just too good. He could steal on anybody. They want to take another look at it, but it looks to me like the hand is in under the tag. Junior's hands are the quickest. He's like the thief of Baghdad. You can't see him. He gets that ball. Watch it. Did he get it? Oh, I don't know if he did. This is taking a really long time. Yes, it is. At the review, the call in the field stands. The runner is safe. Kansas City will lose their challenge. Yeah, I think the longer this went, the more nervous the Royals were getting. Gavin Sheets is the batter, left handed hitter against the righty Marsh. And there's Gavin Sheets, shoots one into the gap. And Luis Robert Jr. will come around to score. It's the White Sox taking a 1 0 lead. Let's go. So the Sox take advantage of that steal and lead 1 0 here in the first. So now Bobby Wood Jr., 10 game hit streak, hitting over 500 in that span coming in. He's now exactly 20 for his last 40. And that's hit to the gap in right center, and he will extend the hitting streak. And he bounces it over the wall for a double. Ah, too bad. I thought that had three written all over it. For Bobby, that's double number 30 on the year so Bobby has time to move up to third base with two down here is Salvador Perez he fly to left his first time and a swing a little tapper up the third base side and the catcher has it fires wide at first Bobby scores Salvi will make the turn and go to second as the throw goes down the right field line Gavin sheets over to get it in foul territory so the Royals will tie the game yeah let's just say that's going to be a hit unless he made a spectacular play Chucky was not going to get this runner at first and it was going to be a run swung out and missed first strikeout for Flexen we head to the bottom of the third tied at one MJ to left Freddie to center and now Michael Garcia who's the third baseman tonight he has hits in three straight games breaking ball line down the left field line that'll be down for a hit over to play it is Benintendi Garcia going for two into second he's safe to throw gets beyond the cover man the second baseman Baldwin and Garcia is going to go to third base so a hustle double you might have called it but the throw from Benintendi was wide and on the air and throw Garcia moves up to third he's 90 feet away with two down throw was just barely off the mark and Baldwin unable to pick it so it is an error charge to Ben and one and two on Izzy he grounded out to second base now he has a chance to drive and run with Garcia third base and two down in the fourth and it's off the end of the bat and he will drive in the run and the Royals take a 2 1 lead in the fourth inning give Izzy his 28th stake beautiful had a way to lob it out there Garcia trots home and the Royals take a 2 1 lead on a bloop single by Isbell 2 1 KC here in the top of the fourth Alec Marsh working with a lead for the first time tonight back to work is a fastball that is called strike three and Ben Attendee knew it so that's three strikeouts one swinging two looking courtesy of Alec Marsh tonight grounded to first Alec Marsh pitching with the lead for the first time gets the White Sox in order in the bottom of the fourth so that double extended his hitting streak to 11 games. That's every game since the All-Star break. Witt chops it toward the hole between third and short. Lopez backhand pickup. He knows he doesn't have a chance. He just shakes his head, doesn't try a throw. Witt safe at first. He knows all about Bobby Witt Jr.'s speed. Back-to-back -back singles to start the fifth, and the Royals have runners on first and second with nobody out. Nine hits for Kansas City. 
So far, minimal damage, just two runs. Reds on the ground. This could be two. One at second over to first. Baldwin with the nice throw, realizing the catcher running, took him, taking his time. They turn it. So the man leading this team in grounding into double plays grounds into another one. Selby grounds into his 13th double play of the year. And now one out away from getting out of this with the score exactly where it started at 2 to 1. Swing and a bounding ball to short. Charged by Lopez. He'll throw to first and Flexen works his way out of it. So Vaughn draws a walk. That's the third free pass of the inning. Two hit batters and a walk. Runners on first and second with two outs for Luis Robert Jr. Who's two for two tonight with a single and a double? And he's breaking out of a funk. This is the hold of the right field. Ricky Lopez, they're going to send him. Here comes the throw from Renfro off the line, and we are tied at two here in the fifth. Luis Robert Jr. coming through. Uh, people always question if you're crazy enough to send somebody on Hunter Renfro, and he had that ball plenty early to nail the runner at home plate, but it was off the mark. Matt Quitrero makes the pitching change. First and second, two outs, Sheets up, Serpa in, and the bottom of the fifth tied at two. And he gets Sheets with two on and two out to put an end to the bottom of the fifth inning, but Luis Robert Jr. ties the game. Bottom of the six we go. And Eloy rips that one to left field. Melendez backhanding, he will get it back in. A stand-up double for Eloy Jimenez to start this bottom of the six. But the last three days, it looks like Eloy is starting to figure it out. So that will bring to the plate Benintendi. He's 0 for 2. Benintendi grounds into the right field corner. Eloy's going to score. Back to back doubles to start the sixth, and the Sox lead 3 to 2. These guys are going hunting right now against Zerpa. Back and forth we go. It's the Sox retaking the lead up 3 to 2. Paul DeYoung will bat. He's 0 for 1. Reached on a hit by pitch his last trip. Yeah. Gets through the heart of the right side. Ben Attendee's waved in. He will score. The White Sox have played it two here in this sixth inning to take a 4 2 lead. And we had number 41 for Paul DeYoung. Ben Attendee comes around third and scores. It's 4 to 2. And Andrew Vaughn bats first against Chris Stratton. And he swings and hits a shot deep to the left. And it's going to go halfway up the bleachers. One of the longer home runs we've seen him hit here. 12th bomb of the season for Andrew Vaughn. Cue the fireworks on his Monday night. Five runs for the White Sox. Hunter Renfro with one down. He is 0 for 3. Renfro hits it high in the air, deep to right field. Fletcher back out of the track at the fence. It's gone. Hunter Renfro gives the Royals some life. An opposite field solo homer. There's our fans. They're here. It's Renfro's 11th home run of the season. A fly ball that kept carrying and carrying. A 354 foot homer. Base is empty. One out. And again, now 5 to 3. And Ooh. now Melendez. Hooking. Hooking. It is a fair ball. And now it's a one run game. Back to back homers. First Renfro. Now Melendez. And this is a one run game. It's 5-4 to four in the top of the eighth inning. 27 come from behind wins the Royals have. This would be a huge one if they could make it. So that puts a charge back into the Royals' dugout. On the ground and into right field. And the tying run is on. And Garcia's on with a two-out single. And that's going to be it for Steven Wilson. As Pedro comes out to take him out, I think it's Brebia coming in. Try to hold on to this one-run lead for the Sox here in the eighth inning. Adam Frazier battled for nine pitches. And then was plunked by the 10th. And now Michael Massey has drawn a two out walk. That's just his sixth walk all year. Look who's coming up. And Bobby Witt Jr. is coming to the plate. First player with three plus hits of four straight games versus the Sox since, well, Ty Cobb. I remembered him. A summer surge of legendary proportions. The Royals have come from behind and now lead by three. Oh man, this Royals team is fired up now. The Sox fans are heading for the gates. And so the Royals are up by three, looking for a 
28th come from behind win. First pitch fastball, chop to the left side, Witt backhands, shallow left, long throw to first, and it's in time to get him. Bobby Witt Jr. dazzles again. A go-ahead grand slam in the top of the eighth, and now a defensive gem to start the bottom of the nine. And now MacArthur is one out shy of a spotless bottom of the ninth inning. Vaughn hits it on the ground, left side, Witt dives, smothers it on the grass to his feet, throw to first. Oh, he got him! What a play! Bobby Wood Jr. The Royals come from behind and beat the White Sox 8 to 5. And who else than Bobby Wood Jr. to deliver meaningful moment after meaningful moment. Night game tomorrow. Maybe the streak ends then. Try to get your rest and let's shake this one off. This one was a tough one.